Hey, speaking of drinking, I'd like to ask about rituals up top. Uh, yeah. When you write, what sort of rituals do you have? Or, or Yeah, same thing pretty talk much Talk about your day. process. Yeah, I wake up, uh, go to the Starbucks, or yeah, mostly Starbucks. Got my headphones on, put my laptop on the table, and have my coffee and write, go to town. So every morning you get up and go to the coffee shop and write? Every, even on weekends, every day. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. Now I have kids, and that changes things. But Sure. Yeah. Wow, that's super cool. And it's always the same uh, coffee shop? No. Or do you mix it up? I bounce around based on the street parking because it's, <laughs> it's Los Angeles. So Tuesdays, you can't park on this side of the street. It's like a whole thing. So you know where to go uh, depending on the parking. That's awesome. So yeah. basically, that's your nine to five. You get up and go to the, every day at the same time. You go to the coffee shop. Every day at the same time. I usually will bail to uh, pick up my kid from school Yeah, and then take him back. We hang for a little bit and either I'll go back or, uh, or I'll just call it a day depending on that's how That's amazing. How long are you there for? Uh, five hours or so. Wow, a stretch. that's super cool. Yeah, I that's, really love it. I, it's like you know, I, I have such a, I, I miss it when I'm not there. Yeah, I have so many questions about this. See, that's the discipline in writing that I don't have, and that's why I'm not a successful writer. I feel like I, I think it's just sort of like I'm always looking over my shoulder at another person doing that, and their script is probably way better than mine. So I better be <laughs> sitting. I better be concentrating. Oh, so you make a co- uh, competition almost. I uh, I just assume that they're, I'm going to be found out any <laughs> any moment. So I have to. I think that's the. Work. I think that's just this, the world of artists. Though I feel like a lot of people on the podcast lately have had that same mentality, especially a lot of writers. Yeah, that's we're a neurotic bunch. <laughs> that's for sure. But, uh, okay, so let's say you get up this morning, Monday. Do you have? the the coffee shop in mind that you're going to go to right away or is it based on mood or is it based uh, on what you're writing I, I knew i had to mail some letters today so i went to the coffee shop that By has the post, the, post <laughs> the, the, the what is it called the uh blue box re, yeah the blue box the blue box i knew where that is so i went to the one across the street from that and i sat there and just did not look up until one fifteen today that is incredible do you do you, you obviously don't try to avoid the ones with wi-fi you, no, I, I'm I'm good with the Wi-Fi. I can, can I can contain myself, and I find it's damn, like a decent disciplined. distraction. Oh, Sometimes wow. you're like, nope, nothing good is happening. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over to the websites and uh, and scroll. Do you do you like limit your times of, of free free for all? No, no, no. no, you're that disciplined. Yeah, you can always man. Yeah, you know, the music does it. That's really and and it sounds super pretentious, but like a, a good song will come on. I listen to like BBC Six in the morning or yeah. whatever, and a good song will come on, and then suddenly like. The juices start to flow. And you know, it's that's funny because when I'm like going for a walk, I'll listen to music and then a good song comes on. I'm like, you know what? It's time to run. Yeah. And so it's kind of like that. It is. It's, a, it's inspirational. So you're always listening to music. Is the music based on anything? Is it, is it just a random playlist or is it, is it what you're writing influences the music? If you're no. writing a 500 Days of Summer, you're listening to Smiths. If you're writing a Spectacular Now, you're listening to... <laughs> Smiths. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> No, it, it's, uh, it it's depends. Like some, something more. Sometimes, yeah, no, it, they, uh, it, it's, I've been letting the like radio stations dictate. Uh, and then if you hear something and you're like, what's that? You go to the Spotify and you go, oh, I want to. Oh, wait, you're listening that. to terrestrial radio? I'm listening to BBC Six as it's being played because I feel like the whatever they're listening to at 9 a.m. is, is you know, evening for them. So it's pretty great. And that's. That's uh, interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't I haven't done like a deep dive on the, the, the people out there, but um, I used to live there briefly. Oh, that makes sense. And I love the that station is terrific. So. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's funny. I feel like not a lot of people listen to terrestrial radio anymore. So that it's, you're keeping it's it alive. Fun. There's a lot of commercials <laughs> yeah, and talking. Yeah. It is. It's, you're not used to it now. It sucks. Okay, that's great. So when you're writing, are you always in final draft? Are you in a notepad? What do you? What do you? So it Weber just changes I, all the time. The thing about us is that, like, I don't like to outline and prepare. I like to sit and just go. Yeah. Right? Um, and he won't let me. This is, is Michael Webb, your yes. writing partner. Yes, exactly. We um, we've been writing together since we started this. We were friends first uh, since like two thousand um, and uh, or ninety nine even. And his thing is outlining. He likes to be um, prepared. Yeah. And um, so that's – it's been helpful because I don't enjoy that process. So right. When, and he lives in New York. I live here in L.A. We spend a lot of time on the phone in the beginning stages mapping it out. And then we get sort of an outline uh, that serves as a roadmap that's detailed enough that it's like – I'll take one through four, you take five through eight, and then we email back and forth, and we never have to speak again. And, um, <laughs> and that's how we've always sort of worked. And so, like, yeah, I can I can put my headphones on and work for five hours on stuff that we've talked about. 
and uh, and then email to him and say, I think this is done or, you know, I'm still working on the, whatever. I'll talk to you tomorrow. But that's sort of how we've always. That's great. Behaved. Yeah. So as a person that doesn't outline out, out doesn't like outlining. Mm-hmm. I found it. I've only had a little <laughs> beer. Uh, do you, you literally are just sitting there typing and finding the story as you go, almost like a choose your own adventure. Or do you have in your mind where you're going? Yeah. You, you just don't like to put it down or what? Yeah, it's funny. I, I, it's when things surprise you, you feel like, oh wow, reader will be surprised by that, or right. you know, viewer that will be cool for them, as opposed to like, oh gosh, this scene that I know exactly every beat of. How's anyone else going to be thrilled by it if I'm bored? Right. Um, it becomes a little pain by numbers. So I always like to do something different than what we've talked about and planned. Sure. Um, and just to keep it interesting yeah so but I, but if i don't have that i would like i sat down to try to write something and i probably wrote 50 pages and then when i was done with it i was like i don't know what page 51 is i'm just gonna never mind and right. delete, delete the whole thing i what? have a tendency to just delete everything what so now i don't do that anymore now okay, i have good. somebody who holds me accountable <laughs> and doesn't allow me to do that but i've been known to, to do that my pinky is hovering over that delete button not the entire time so wow yeah do you use any of those like crazy apps that like auto delete if you stop writing? No, I don't know about this. Apparently, I don't, some I don't, writers I should have, not know about this. <laughs> some writers have told me there's like various apps I use, and one of them that I've found fascinating is if you stop typing, it starts deleting what you have on the paper. Jeez, <laughs> I, I have the natural version of that. Yeah, it sounded I, like I, that. I, I don't need that app. Okay, so let's say you just finished a disaster artist. You have no ideas. You go to the coffee shop. Do you just start like writing down ideas or do you just jump into some – you come up with an idea and go deep into that for a while? Hopefully you have a, a, a few ideas that are interesting that are percolating and you have an idea for a scene. You have an idea for a character that you think could you could turn into something. You have some kernel of something. Yeah. Um, and that would become an email – paragraph that i would send to uh, him what do you think of this bounce it around and then we kick it back and forth and eventually either it's take it becomes a thing or there's nothing there and it you know dies and we've been doing a lot of adaptations um which uh which i really really love because it's a different part of your brain and and it's more like you when you're not writing you're reading right uh, which we love to do anyway um and we've been fortunate enough to be in a situation where we've done a couple so we get some books early and we can read them. We can decide if they, we think they should be movies or or, um, or whatever. And um, and and that's been a, a great kind of thing for us to tackle, um, both because we really enjoy it and also because um, it doesn't feel like you're wasting time staring at a blank screen. You you are there. There's something to do. Yeah, that's good. Let me ask you this selfishly because this is a problem I always run into. Got an idea. I st- for a screenplay or whatever, I start writing it, I write, I write, I write, and then I'm like, all right, it's done, and then I only got like 40 pages. <laughs> right. What do you do there? How do you, how, do you have like a cheat code for filling in? That's, that's an interesting <laughs> thing. The, well, or so should I writing, just enter the Academy Award for short film? Are you writing comedy? Yeah, usually. So that's, I feel like that's, we, we, we could all write together. We could use your 40 pages and <laughs> your story. Our, our stuff is really, it's always long and not funny. <laughs> And so, like the that's what we could use to pepper. So you it. you have the problem where you're too long. Usually, it's it's too long. It's Whoa. Like, we'll, we'll we'll often have the map and we'll say, "We're this is right. We're really feeling like this is appropriately you know paced." Yeah. And then I'll get to a point where I where I realize, "Oh no no, we're like going to be forty pages over where we should should be." And see that something's to me, busted. coming from my side, that's a good problem to have. It yeah, it sucks to snip down, but that's a way better problem to have. Yeah, but I, but you can take your forty pages and and, and with like a few added, you know, kind of highways. Find so what is, what is what are those added highways? Is it just like it, what else can cause what else can set him back? What else can set him back or whatever? The uh, protagonist maybe or uh, you know if there are characters that you want to explore more that are peripheral at the moment what are their like, little shenanigans what would happen into? if this yeah like i feel like um most most comedies do have um you know some surprising trajectories right it's not as linear just tangents as, yeah but that's why we don't write comedies 